Hello and welcome to the vlog. It's two years since I bought the boat and that means it's two years since I last had the boat blacked. That is to say, had the hull painted to stave off rust. And whilst you can stretch it out to three years, and some people do even more than that, I would quite like to have a look at my hull, see how the blacking is holding up and redo it. Plus the anodes, which are little metal things you stick on the side to also stave off rust, they are almost certainly in need of replacement now. So what I'm gonna do is take the boat back to my jolly old friends at Yelvertoft Marina. They will haul it out of the water, give it a jolly old jet wash, and then I will re-black it. I've done the route to Yelvertoft from Braunston in several prior videos, so I won't show a lot of this, but as we haven't had any cruising for a while, here is a handful of shots. There's the stop house, the place I first fell in the canal. That's Butcher's Bridge. Have you ever seen a boat more laden with coal? Definitely ready for winter. Remember this was filmed in October. And I'm still feeling so sad for this apparently unwanted tiny boat. Please, somebody go and rescue it. It's not something I can do. The first of the six Braunston locks. There was a locky on duty and he even posted some trip times if you were feeling ambitious. One of the pounds was really low. You know it's bad when you can see the mud of the bottom. Six locks done, that's taken two hours, which is about right, 20 minutes per wide lock. An awful lot of boats coming down, which also helps. And now I'm approaching Braunston Tunnel. I've just been told there is another boat coming through and I hate Braunston Tunnel so much because of the little kink in it, I might wait for the other boat to come out. And I did. The other boat was virtually out as I got there, so I held back for two or three minutes and they were grateful. In a flash, I was through to the other side, where the autumn sun in the trees made for a beautiful scene. You go along a nice rural stretch for two miles or so, under a handful of bridges, and turn left at Norton Junction to start up the Leicester Arm towards Yelvertoft. Very soon you're at Watford Locks, seven in total, four of which are a staircase. Again, a locky was on duty to help me up. And a rare treat as I'd remembered to bring a drink and a snack for the trip this time. Crick Tunnel, no problem, nice and straight. And on the other side, the ABNB Brokerage and the Moorings Pub. It's only a short hop and a skip from here to Yelvertoft, where I moored on the slipway, and the boat was hauled out the next day on their trailer. This meant I could have my first look at the underwater side since last year, and that anode is not holding on at all well. Both were looking a little worn, shall we say, but new ones would soon go on. Round the back, the propeller was fine, no issues. Another sad anode, and a lot of freshwater mollusks or something. No chunks out of the chine plate though, it was fine. But something had rubbed all through the blacking here to bare metal, and it was starting to rust. Enter new Gary with his jet wash. Old Gary went off to another marina, so they hired another Gary in his place. The idea is to blast all the crud and the poor mollusks off the hull, so that it's ready for new blacking. It also means you can get a much better look at the condition of things. A couple more ominous patches were revealed. With the hull washed and left to dry, you can have a proper look at the state of things. The front anode wasn't too bad as you can see, but there was a distinct difference in blacking above and below the waterline, with the hull definitely in need of a repaint. This is entirely normal though. Underneath was nice and solid. I'll come back to this at the end. 
Now it was time for the boat to go in here, which was the reason I chose to come back to Yelvertoft. Yes, I know there are many yards who will happily black boats outside, and they will say, it doesn't matter if it's raining, it doesn't matter if the hull is wet, it's absolutely fine, it all goes on okay. Well, call me crazy, call me ill-informed, call me a fool if you like, but I want to do my blacking undercover in the dry, in part so that the blacking can properly dry between coats, but also so that I can stay dry while I'm doing it, because I think it is going to be quite a laborious and long-winded process, and the weather at the moment is certainly very rainy. So this shed, it's only been up a few weeks, and I heard that Yelvertoff were putting it up. I phoned them up and said, great, can I use your shed? Now, in the interests of full disclosure, they have done me a very good deal knowing that I was going to vlog about it. But let me be absolutely clear, they've not paid me to come and review it. I was always going to come here and use the shed because it's what I wanted to use. It's just when I said, can I book your shed? They said, oh yes, and then we did a bit of a deal. But just, I hope you know, and I'm sure Gilvertoff know, that if there was anything here I don't like, I'll still feature it in the vlog. So it's a proper warts and all look at not quite a review, but look at what it's like to use this paint chip. It is certainly, I have to say, much more impressive than I thought when they said they were putting this thing up. I had visions of perhaps a polytunnel big enough for one boat, but this is a proper metal construction big enough for three boats. I believe they're putting in three-phase electrics. They can do all the welding and everything in here. It's going to be quite impressive and painting and so on and so forth. So it's still being put up. You can see the little bits of wiring still being done, but it's perfect for what I want, which is just doing the blacking. Incidentally, I did promise, as part of the deal, that I'd show off the marina's new tarmac road, which replaces the awful dirt track that I slagged off in Vlog 33. This is much nicer now. Now the boat was backed into the shed, and I had the entire place to myself. The way this works is that they stick wooden logs under the hull to keep it off the floor and level. With the boat now in the shed, what I'm going to do is take a scraper and just go all around the hull, scraping off any final loose bits of blacking. Anything that's properly adhered will stay on, but just any final bits of blacking and rust and muck that need to come off. Then I will take a sander and go around the gunnels and sand back any bits that are also going to need rust treatment. This took a while, even when speeded up, but by the end of it the hull was ready for treatment. It's getting very dark to film inside the shed, even though there is probably about an hour of daylight left, I reckon. Apparently the lights aren't working, someone's forgotten to throw a switch or a fuse has blown or some such. So I'm simply going to have to tell you what I'm about to do, and you can imagine it. it's not that exciting really. I'm going to go all round the sides of the boat at the waterline, which is the worst place for rust, where the water and air meet. It's the prime conditions, and that's always the bit that rusts most. Go round that with the Furtan rust treatment, and that takes 24 hours to fully cure, so I'll just be kicking my heels tomorrow. Go around and do that and also apply the rust treatment to a few bits um, on the gunnels as well. And then, once that is cured, you wipe off any excess and get on with the blacking, and that'll be in, as I say, about 24 hours' time. Time has passed. The fur tan had its 24 hours to work its magic, and last night I washed it all off. It always feels very weird rinsing off a rust treatment with water, but that's what you're supposed to do with fur tan, so I did it. And the boat has had overnight to dry, so now I just need to put the blacking on. I've got 25 litres of International Intertough 16. You do read various reviews of this on the internet, people pro and against, but at some point you have to stop reading the internet or your mind will explode and it's what the boat had before so that's what I'm going with. I am already wearing my scruffiest work clothes but I think for blacking I'm going to need something a bit more. So, by the power of screw fix, whew, that was good, let's get started. The thick, gloopy bitumen paint had a good stir, and then I began by doing all the fiddly bits with a brush. In other words, going round the bow post, along the rubbing strakes and the chine plate, any of the parts where a roller brush wouldn't reach properly. 
After two and a half hours, that is half the boat, half blacked. So I am going to stop for what I think is a very well-deserved cup of tea. Then it was the same again, but on the port side. By the end of the day, both sides up to the waterline had had a good coat. The boat has now had two coats of blacking from the base plate up to the waterline. What I'm going to do today is give it a third coat from the base plate up to the gunnels. You know, a lot of people don't actually black along the gunnels, but I've decided to do that because it will be easier to touch up than the matte black paint that I've currently got, and frankly, that's all falling off. So just a big rollered on coat pretty much all over the boat today. The new anodes will also be welded on today, and then that is pretty much it. So in a couple of days, I can relaunch when it's all dry. And this is how smart the boat looked after that final coat. I was rather pleased if I say so myself. Now to the anodes. Lumps of magnesium welded onto the side. Saltwater boats use zinc, freshwater, magnesium. First of all, the decrepit old anodes needed to come off, and here new Gary came into his own once more. The remnants of the welded stud was ground off, and a new anode welded on. Presumably he's checking it stuck properly. and then a bit of finessing. Lovely. And the half-worn one, which still has life in it, was left in place. I also decided to have new anodes in the middle, as each anode only protects to a certain distance either side of it, so the ones at the bow and stern wouldn't help the middle of the hull. These anodes are deliberately thin so as not to jut out and catch on anything, such as when you're in a log. Job done, and time to refloat the boat, so the trailer came back in and lined up under the boat up to the first wooden block. The boat was then lifted slightly to free that block, which was then moved in front of the lift beam, the boat lowered onto the block again, and the trailer could then continue to move back, whereupon it could lift the entire boat up and over the blocks. Out it went, and gently back into the water. I know what you're undoubtedly thinking. Why didn't I black the bottom of the boat, the actual base plate? Well, thanks for asking. There are two schools of thought on this. The first is, of course you should black the base plate. It's a giant chunk of steel which you are putting in water, and furthermore, it's the bottom of your boat. Of course you want it protected. However, the other school of thought says, first of all, you need to find a yard, marina, wharf, or whatever, that can actually raise your boat up enough and securely enough for you to do that work. And some marinas can't do that. Secondly, the place where you find most rust on the boat is actually along the water line, because you need that combination, not just of water, but of air, for the rust to take place. And two feet down where the base plate is, yes, there is some oxygen, but nothing like as much. Also, 
the base plate is 10 millimeters thick steel. It's an unusual amount for a narrow boat, and it's going to take an awful long time to rust through 10 millimeters thick of steel. It's often said that boats actually rust from the inside out, not the outside in, because you get condensation on the inside, there's air on the inside, and so they will tend to rust out that way. And finally, as soon as you leave your marina and go down the canals again, you're almost certain at some point to ground the boat on the shallows, at which point all the stuff at the bottom of the canal is gently stripping off all the blacking you've put on the bottom of the boat anyway. So, for the moment, I have chosen not to black the bottom of my boat. Some people will scream at this, others will nod sagely and say, yeah, there really was no need. Make of that what you will, ask any questions down below, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.